Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and today I've got another one of those 3D patterns that I've been working on. This is a black bear. This guy is considerably easier to put together than the baby elephant. <laughs> and you can download the pattern if you want to make one just like this. Uh, it's out on my blog. I'm going to charge $5.50 I think for the download. Um, and it goes together really fast. This is a weekend project, especially if you do it like I did. I was kind of in a hurry when I put this fellow together. Um, just because I just sold my house and I bought another one and I was trying to get things done uh, a few days ago, especially on the painting part, uh, because I had a, um, an inspector showing up uh, soon and I just wanted to get everything done as quickly as I could. So I kind of rushed through the painting, but I think it actually turned out okay anyway. It's certainly not my usual style, but I actually like it. This is a faux taxidermy mount and it's really obvious that I made no attempt at realism here and oddly enough I, I think it turned out really good. <laughs> so uh, sometimes uh, changing your style actually can be kind of fun. Now let me show you how this was done. The first thing you do, of course, is you uh, print the pattern out on some cardstock. I bought my cardstock at Walmart, and I put plastic uh, plastic shelf liner on both sides of the paper, so it's nice and stiff, and it's also waterproof, so you don't have a problem with the pattern collapsing when you put paper mache over it. Then, after you have the the plastic on both sides, you cut the pieces out and you tape them together. The nose uh, is the only thing that's even a little bit challenging on this guy. Uh, there's, um, it, it kind of feels like origami a little bit. I'm going to color code those uh, those edges on the nose just so that you know which direction the bends go. Other than that, the, the pattern goes together really fast. You do need to put something on the inside of it before you put the back on because the cardstock that you printed on just is not strong enough to um, to hold up when you're pressing the paper mache over it. So you do need something on the inside to support it. I used aluminum foil this time in the muzzle and then I just poured in some uh, foam pellets that I happen to have lying around from some package that I got a few months ago. Um, if, if you can think of a better way to support the inside of these heads, I would really like to hear about it. I did. Um, get to read part of a comment by someone I think on YouTube uh, explaining how he would use uh, some uh, spray foam and YouTube hid the comment from me so I didn't get to read all of it. Uh, so if that was you, please try again. Now once it's all done and all the pieces together, you're going to put a, uh, you cut out a piece of heavy cardboard so the back stays nice and flat. Now once all the, uh, once the pattern was put together, I covered it with brown paper. Um, I didn't even bother putting the masking tape on it like I usually do. And because someone out on the blog had asked me if it would make uh, raw flour and water paste stronger if they added some Elmer's glue to it, and I didn't know. Uh, it was just one of those things I, I never tried it, so I decided that I would. Um, it turns out, I, I can tell you now, um, it doesn't make it any stronger. It, actually, it isn't as sticky as raw flour and water paste. And so it was a little bit different to work with. The one thing though that it does do is, uh, and I don't know why this happens, but usually um, raw flour and water paste will dry with little sprinkles of flour uh, that you can actually see over your, your paper. So if you wanted your brown paper, for instance, to show up as brown paper when you were done, you would have this mottled color where you could see the paste uh, as it dried. That didn't happen when I added the uh, Elmer's glue. It, it dried uh, completely clear the same way that a cooked flour and water paste does. And so I got the clear paste without bothering to uh, cook it. I, I think that was actually a benefit, um, but I, I can tell you for sure it isn't any stronger. Now once it was dry, um, I was still in a hurry, uh, like I said, I, I had people coming over that particular day. So I, I wanted to paint it quickly and I also wanted some of that brown paper to, to show through. 
And the reason for that is that I actually made two of these guys and the first one I painted a flat black on the, on the outside, um, you know, on the, on the major parts of his head and it was horrible. I really, really hated it and so I chucked it out. Um, one nice thing about these patterns, if you really wreck something uh, when you're painting it, uh, you really can start over and you still got the same bear, which is, which is kind of nice. So this time I used some of this uh, uh, acrylic medium. It just happened to be a cheap brand of acrylic, acrylic medium. And I mixed in with it some black acrylic craft paint and a little bit of brown. I think it was nutmeg brown is what they call it. This was just happened to be the only acrylic paint they had <laughs> at Walmart a, a few days ago and we don't have an art store here in town. So I mixed a little bit of these uh, with the gel to make it transparent and then used a really old ratty brush uh, to brush it on uh, to make sure that I could see the brush marks and see a little bit of that brown paper showing through. I did the same thing using some raw sienna and the gel uh, on his muzzle. And then the last thing I did once everything else was dry I again put some raw sienna over his eyes and then I uh, did his pupils uh, using um, brown pieces of black tissue paper. I really like doing that. I wish I had discovered that years ago because I have such a hard time making both pupils in the eyes the same size. I don't know why that's so hard for me, but uh, once I figured out that I could just glue the uh, little round pieces of black on there with some gel medium, I, that totally changed my attitude about painting eyes. Um, I used a little bit of blue and a little bit of white for the uh, reflection in the eye. And then the last thing I had to do was to add some uh, matte acrylic varnish. So that was uh, a real fast method of making this guy. Like I said, if you want to make a bear like this, you can download the pattern. I've got the, the, the um, link down below. And as soon as I move, I have decided, I think it was yesterday morning, it just came to me, that as soon as I get uh, settled into my new house, I'm actually going to start writing a book. I've been wanting to make a book for a long time on, on paper mache faces, uh, people faces, not 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 critter faces, but actual people. If you have any ideas that uh, you would like to share with me as to how you think uh, or, or, or what you think that I should put in that book, uh, I would love to hear it. Your comments and suggestions have always been just so helpful. I would really appreciate that. So that's it for today. If you do make a bear, I sure hope that you will come over to the website and show him off. I would love to see how it turns out. I'll see you there, ultimatepapermache.com.